Record. Welcome to the No More Late Fees podcast. I'm Jackie. And I'm Danielle, and we're just two best friends and ex-Blockbuster employees rewatching some of the best and worst movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. This week, we are talking about the 1998 disaster movie Armageddon with our guest, Stephen Brogan Cortez. Welcome, Stephen. Hello. Hello, Danielle and Jackie. I am so <laughs> friggin' thrilled to be here. <laughs> I think you just need to do our intros from now yeah. on. I love it. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. No worries whatsoever. I could do that. You let me know. I'll be like, welcome to the No More Late Fees podcast with Jackie Ooh. and Danielle. Yeah, I, I got it. you. <laughs> If you want to get to know Steven a little bit better, pause and check out their trailer. Make sure you go listen and we'll wait for you. Don't worry. But before we dive in, let's get into some housekeeping. I I think it was right this time. It, it sounded pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you love the podcast and you want to support us, here's a few ways you can. Did you know writing a review and or rating us helps us get more listeners? If you want to be featured and help us grow, head to Apple, Spotify, Podchasers, iHeartRadio, Good Pods, or your favorite pod podcasting platform and leave us a review. Did you see Stitcher? I was playing? just thinking that. How crazy. That, right? it, it's been around for what, like 15, 16, 17 years. I don't know. Yeah. Like a long time. That's nuts. It's What's very What's going on sad. with Stitcher? They're shutting their doors. They're closing yeah. in August. There'll be no more. Oh. Bye, bye, bye. Here. So if you're on Stitcher, head to any of these other podcasting platforms and follow us there. Yeah, that's just sucks. And I'm sorry for your loss. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I wonder, like, if it's going to be, like, it's not even being bought out by someone else. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't understand. The competition is just very uh, thick right now. So, anywho, if you haven't subscribed to our show on your favorite podcast platform, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click. Do We're it. waiting for you. Just do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> And if you want exclusive content and stickers, lives, access to our Burned Out Spotify playlist, head over to patreon.com slash no more late fees and become a bestie. Now let's get into the movie. Let's do Armageddon. it. Armageddon. When an asteroid threatens to collide with Earth, NASA honcho Dan Truman determines the only way to stop it is to drill into it, baby. Drill into its surface and de detonate a nuclear bomb. A nuclear bomb. This leads him to renowned driller Harry Stamper, who agrees to helm the dangerous mission, provided he can bring along his own hotshot crew. Among them is the cocksure. <laughs> I didn't. You didn't, I didn't write, write this. this. <laughs> <laughs> Among them is the cocky AJ, who Harry thinks isn't good enough for his daughter until the mission proves otherwise. The movie stars Bruce Willis, Billy Bob Thornton, Liv Tyler, Ben Affleck, Will Patton, Keith David, Michael Clark Duncan, R.I.P., Peter Storman, st wait, Peter Stormare, yeah, Peter Stormare, and Steve Buscemi. The movie was directed by douchebag Michael Bay. <laughs> <laughs> the story was by robert roy Poole and jonathan hensley screenplay was by jonathan hensley and jj abrams and you can watch it currently on the new max but before we start let's get into our ratings rewind let's do it so you know the drill. Ha ha, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> I did not see that coming. <laughs> Before we get into the movie, we'll reveal the rating our Y2K versions of ourselves we give. Then at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial ratings. Our scale consists of would buy it, would buy it again. The best would play on repeat. Five day rental. Would watch again. Two day rental. Yeah, nothing to write home about. And same day rental. Hot asteroid trash garbage. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, Stephen, we'll start with you. What was your Y2K rating of Armageddon? My Y2K rating of this movie, I mean, it always had a special place in my heart. It, it, <laughs> it was the movie as like a, a young man. It was like, you can cry to this. <laughs> yeah. You, you can cry. You can feel. Because it has everything you want. I mean, well, everything I'd want in a movie it has comedy, it has action, it has suspense. And then it has emotion too. Like you can kind of tell, you can feel that JJ had a, a part in this movie. Yeah. And so I would give it a, would buy it and buy it again. Nice. I did always do that. Jackie, I'll let you go. <laughs> <laughs> I have, Y2K Jackie had mixed feelings about this movie and any movie where it was sad. And so I would literally, Danielle, don't shake your head at me. I would watch <laughs> this movie up until they drew straws. And then I would stop watching it because I didn't want to see the sad part. I never knew that they had like the wedding montage at the end because I had never seen it. I really think therapy may help with <laughs> now that we have been I'm going through. Now. A I'm better now. <laughs> I'm yeah. OK. I'm, I'm, are you feeling safe, Jackie? Do you feel safe? I am 100 percent safe. <laughs> <laughs> because. Why didn't you want to feel the emotions? You're a Pisces. That's your that's your default. Uh, Water. Yeah. I mean, I still owned it. I just didn't watch the last like 20 uh, minutes of it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, what's your rating then? I would buy it. Okay. <laughs> Wait, so if you never watched the ending with like on VHS, didn't I don't know if this was every VHS, but the music video to Aerosmith's song was at the end. She must have watched it once at least to know that it was sad, right? Yeah, that's true. No, no, I think I think my mom just told me it was sad. And so I would get up and leave the room while the family was watching it and they'd finish it and rewind it so I didn't have to watch the sad part. They drew straws and everyone lived happily ever after. Don't you worry, Jackie. Don't you worry. <laughs> and I'm sure I saw the the music video on like TRL in the box, but like you just took uh, me back. <laughs> <laughs> but like that was more out of context. I could compartmentalize that more. Hmm. I, it's just it was who I was. <laughs> now for me, it's weird because I don't have this on DVD. But I'm not surprised. I don't, I love action movies, but I don't have, I've never, I don't think I bought a lot of them to yeah. tell you the truth. Like, mm. I love, I love to hear the bones crack. You know that. You do. And I don't, I don't have it. So I, it is a would buy it for me because I do remember very much loving this movie. I'm going to just leave it at that. Okay. That yeah. is fair. <sighs> Let's get into this movie in the box office and may I say drama because there's a lot of it. Ooh. Yeah. So okay. the <laughs> the budget for this movie it was $140 million. It was the most expensive film of 1998. And the worldwide box office box office total was $553.7 million. That's a lot of cheddar, especially for 1998. And so let's go into the origin of this movie, right? So Michael Bay, he had a deal with Disney for, he had like a, a two movie deal with them, right? The first was The Rock, which came out in 1996. And originally he decided to sign on for both because he didn't really have faith that The Rock was going to do well. And so he just wanted to have that second movie to make sure that like, he still he, had work. Yes, yeah, so he still had work. <laughs> yes, correct. But also that like he could, you know, prove it, prove that he he had the stuff. And I think it was just because it came out in the same year. It was a lot of competition. We had Independence Day, Twister, and Mission Impossible. So The Rock actually proved that it was, you know, great. It was a success. And so he found himself kind of like in a predicament because he was looking through all the scripts that Disney had and like nothing was appealing to him. He did the same with the scripts that Jerry Breck Bruckheimer had and again, nothing. So he set out with screenwriter Jonathan Hensley, who he had worked with on The Rock and who Bay claims is a good writer for big ideas. He had an idea that would end up being Armageddon. 
It was Joe Raff's idea to call the film Armageddon after Bay and Hensley pitched him the idea. Roth also decided at the time it would be Disney's biggest film of 1998. Now, the interesting thing is we know there's a term in in Hollywood called twin movies, Mm -hmm. where we see movies come out in the same year, months within each other, and they're the same plot, right? We have Armageddon, and we have Deep Impact. We have First Daughter and Chasing Liberty with yep. Mandy Moore. So just a ton of these movies, The Truman Show and Ed, Ed TV. TV. So you know somebody was talking and stealing. Pretty much that's, you know, yeah, the only reason. So according Hollywood to Hollywood Bruce... insider trading. Right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So according to Bruce Joel Rubin, who's the writer of Deep Impact, he said a production president at Disney took notes on everything that he said during the lunch they had about the script when he was pitching it. And that initiated an Armageddon as a counterfilm at Disney. So thievery. And this is not the last of the drama either. Like, this is... uh, I think Bay is a a douche regardless because of so many other things that I've learned about him. Like the fact that he had Megan Fox, Megan Fox before Transformers. He actually, she, she was like a background in one of the bad boys movies and she was underage and he had, he was like, you know where I should put you in a bikini under waterfall in the background, even though you're completely underage. She talks about this on, I think she was talking to Jimmy Kimmel Mm -hmm. and like, he was kind of like laughing at the whole thing, but it's traumatizing. So that's just one very small (laughs) example of just like him being a douchebag. Yeah. (laughs) So I guess during this back and forth, because Armageddon and Deep Impact were going to be, you know, head to head. He was talking about, yeah, we're real scared when we have Bruce Willis versus like your star power of Tia Leone. And so Tia (laughs) shot back and Uh. was like, a movie did well, like Deep Impact actually did pretty well. And in that exchange, it was actually Bruce Willis who let it slip that they had to go do reshoots after they saw how well Deep Impact did. So just a lot of drama there. A lot, a lot of drama. Sounds like I, I, someone's I like to, a little scared. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and I, I like to think of what Steve Jobs used to say, like, good artists create, great artists steal. Yeah. I mean, it's a tale as old as time, right? Like, <laughs> like even even Apple's computer, well, they were just stealing from, well, freaking, I forgot the company they stole the mouse from, but yeah, this is how it is. And if they were like, yeah, Deep Impact's good, but like, we'll make something else. We'll see how it is. Honestly, if we didn't have capitalism, nothing would really matter because people would just make art and it would just exist instead of, you know, wanting to be first or making a ton of money on it and kind of stealing people's that. ideas. Stripping, yeah. Stripping yeah. ideas from one another. Or just rushing to get it out first and making a like first inferior movie because you want to beat it to the box office. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, either way, all that shit talking armageddon still did amazing obviously and i i I don't like michael bay but i will say that this me this movie visually is beautiful it is and it was also chosen for the criterion collection which they don't give to everybody so actually when it came to the criterion collection they had to kind of defend that they chose to put it in the criterion collection because people were kind of mad about it but they were talking about how just how beautiful it was filmed. They had so many really huge specialized um, experts who were on this project that did the the uh, FX and stuff like that. And it's about working class people as the hero, you know, which mm. we don't always get. Um, so it made it to the Criterion Collection. So if I may yeah. jump in. Yeah, I just had a brain blast about previously <laughs> in, in during the during the preview when we were asking about what would we what would we ask the government right <laughs> if we yeah. were to save the world I already know what I'm going to ask I know now definitively okay this is, this is above dinner with Keanu Reeves above that <laughs> I want capitalism demolished <laughs> I love it 
capitalism demolished or that rocks hitting the water. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I stand for that hundred percent. And by the way, don't forget to check out our merch on redbubble.com. Speaking of capitalism, <laughs> yeah. <Redbubble .com. laughs> so yeah, that that's how the movie started. And let's get into it. You ready, Jackie? So as I was watching this movie, I turned it on on, on Max. And the opening scene, I was like, did I accidentally select like walking with dinosaurs? Like it was <laughs> really bad CGI. And like we've watched movies where the CGI is held up and later in the movie, the CGI is fine. Mm -hmm. It's just this opening scene where it's telling us about the mass extinction of the dinosaurs. And I was, I was like, is this, is this how <laughs> Armageddon starts? <laughs> I don't remember this, but apparently it is. So we get the whole mass extinction <laughs> spiel. Um, I, I didn't remember it either, <laughs> but thank you for telling me before I watched it because I too would have been very confused as to what was happening. <laughs> it was just like, and I had Stephanie, one of our previous guests, this Lena episode, she and I were watching it together and we're like, is this Armageddon? Like we were so <laughs> confused, but alas, it was. And they caution that it's happened before and it'll happen again. And so 65 million years later. We, we get Eddie Griffin riding a bike. Well, <laughs> With his little that, dog. <laughs> before that, we get just like astronauts repairing the ISS. And I literally just wrote science -y space stuff. Mm. <laughs> and they just kept saying, you all right? you all right and he's real sweaty and he's like yeah i'm good stop talking and then a meteor uh destroys, destroys the him. iss and the astronaut and so he was not in fact all right i will like to say that a theme of this entire movie and the criticism that this movie received when it you know was released was that the sciencey stuff in this movie is not accurate a my lot. favorite bit that I read about was NASA actually uses it as like a for litmus training. test for training and they'll have people new to NASA watch it and like try and pick out as many uh, inaccuracies as they can find and so far I think it's like 165 have been found thus far 168 thank you I was close. I didn't even read it from the notes. See? Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, that's, I, I, I love to see it. J.J. Abrams had an interview when he was doing the Star Wars movies. And he said one thing that Michael Bay told him was like, don't worry about the sciencey stuff. Just make a really interesting movie. Yeah. Make a really interesting story. Which, okay. Now, when it comes to the war between this movie and Deep Impact, I think is astrologers, astronomers, sorry, <laughs> Astro <laughs> cancer is in, no, let me stop. Um, <laughs> astronomers do say that Deep Impact is more scientifically sound accurate. And, okay. yeah, and accurate. Yeah. Question um, though, yes. how much does that matter though? When you're like- Who's watching? Like, I don't know. I, personally, I'm like, okay, first off, now it makes sense that Steve Buscemi's the genius of the movie. <laughs> yes. now, now this makes sense. Why? But like, does that matter? Like, if like the science is like, I don't know. I, I, I'm not a scientist myself. I'm not a NASA engineer. But like, I wonder if you are, you're watching this movie. I guess it irks you, but. Oh, I. I, I my Go husband ahead. came in halfway through. Oh, I was about to say, what did Ken's <laughs> corner say? <laughs> He's like, there's no fire in space. That is one of the <laughs> biggest things that they it's a, talked like, about. It, and then he starts talking about like trajectory and like, you're whipping around the moon. Why do you need your boosters? You should have your boosters off. That's why you whip around the moon. Like he was like yelling at the tv at certain points so i guess there is a percentage of people out there that 
understand way more about physics and science than I do that are like, that's <laughs> not quite right. I think the question is this, do movies have the responsibility of education? And I, and I, I, I feel like nuance, right? They're, especially in our country, we have a, a population that's of people that a lot of the things that they learn is through, is through cinema, through yep. media. And I don't think you can, you should get, you know, you should have wiggle room to be creative and make something that's enjoyable. But I do think it's, it's important to make sure that you're putting some accuracy, especially when we're getting into this, this whole media point in our society where people don't know what's real or what's not, you know, and that maybe they won't have access because our education system right now is shit. So I think media does have a responsibility in some ways to provide resources and education. But also if you look at this movie and like movies like Top Gun, we have to also be careful about the media we're consuming because so much of this is money is being poured in from the government for propaganda to get people to join the armed forces. So it's just like, we as consumers should be a little bit more educated about what we're consuming. And I do think there's a responsibility to an extent on the people behind the media to produce things that are a little bit accurate and may, because it's such a high influence. Like if you think about the amount of people that actually went into science because of X-Files, because of Gillian Mm -hmm. Anderson's role, that's huge how many people went into becoming physicians after Grey's Anatomy like those things have real life uh, ripple effects so Mm -hmm. I say yes we do they do have the responsibility that was my long-winded way of saying they have responsibility to try to get it as accurate as possible if they can Danielle you just made me feel like a simple-minded viewer now no (laughs) I didn't need to do that this is fun okay (laughs) But no, you make you you make a very valid point. The responsibility, especially when it comes to the ripple effects, especially when it comes to the wide the wide audience that 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 watches these movies, watches any form of media, and gets influenced by it. Ultimately, like you're saying, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. Not all of us are Ken, so it's you know, true. we're Fire gonna be in like space, right? <laughs> But like, sometimes I watch movies and they're doing things about marketing and I'm like, that shit don't happen. Get that out of here. That's why people think that their clients can come up to me and say, make it go viral. That's not how this works. But it is what it is. You know, I mean, every, almost every teaching movie or TV show ever, except for Abbott Elementary. (laughs) Highly inaccurate. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Before we go any further, I have to talk about the elephant in the room, which is Ben Affleck's teeth. Oh, child! Reading this, finding out this little nugget, I I crawled down a rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. So apparently, Michael Bay and Jerry Bruckheimer made Ben Affleck fix his teeth because he had what they said were quote baby teeth. <laughs> And I was literally like, baby teeth. <laughs> I want to see what his teeth look like before. Oh, Did I you look it, it up? Oh, oh yeah. I'm, lo- I'm looking it up now. What what are we talking about? Baby teeth. <laughs> so what year should what you, so you know, if, if you just Google Ben Affleck baby teeth and do Google <laughs> images, it comes up <laughs> side by side. Oh, I don't I don't oh, oh, oh. <laughs> They did Aww. some. They made. It a, says a very famous star in a plane movie. Is that? That's Tom, Tom Cruise. That's Tom Cruise. Well, they did him dirty because he's got a tooth in the middle of his face. That's Who, Tom true. Cruise? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, did you see what his teeth looked like before he got them done, though? Yeah. I, it, they they yeah. were they were climbing <laughs> over each other trying to get out of his mouth. <laughs> they were Yahtzee teeth. You just rolled them and <laughs> threw them in there. <laughs> Yahtzee team. I got hot hands in the dice game. Click the click. <laughs> oh, so, yes, Ben Affleck spent eight hours a day in a dentist chair for a week 
to get his new grown-up teeth, I guess. And the teeth cost 20 grand. Who ate that bill? Disney. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm, I'm hoping they didn't say, Ben, you got to get new teeth and you have to pay for it. They do look like baby teeth. You know what? I don't like... I don't like... <laughs> Uh, what's his name? But they were right. Good they call, looked, Mike. Good they call. They look like little Tic Tacs. <laughs> <laughs> he looks much better now. Some people, when they get the veneers and stuff, they look so buck tooth and like yeah. it's like the teeth look way too big. His do look very natural. Yeah, his, it's because he's got a big face. Not, I'm, I'm not trying to like yeah. it. He, it fits his face. Unlike yes. some people, it's just like, oh, what did you do? You know, I think when Miley Cyrus got hers, I was like taken aback. It took me a while. Hillary Duff was a major one. Yeah. When she was in Cheaper by the Dozen with her new teeth, I was like, I don't know what's happening <laughs> there, but I don't care for it. I am not paying attention to people's mouths <laughs> during movies. I That's what I'm learning right now. I do not pay attention to their mouths. <laughs> in Spider-Man, Willem Dafoe, they made him wear fake false teeth or whatever because his if you look at his teeth, yeah. they look they're tiny and they're like little ridges. <laughs> he looks like alien teeth. <laughs> Is that a calcium deficiency thing? I, I don't know. know. I mean, I'm no one to talk. I sometimes you know, my teeth are big, but they fit my face, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and i'm not in hollywood so it is what it is now that we've talked about ben affleck's teeth we'll move on. <laughs> the priorities priorities the priorities mm -hmm. so the meteor shower comes through takes out new york city at first nasa thinks it's a missile attack yeah and billy bob is head bitch in charge he <laughs> plays the um the character of Truman, and so he's trying to figure out what's going on. We'll get to New York being destroyed, Danielle, but first we have to meet Carl, the retired... Carl's trash. Oh he my is. god. I'm glad he has his telescope and stuff, but oh, you're a horrible human, Carl. <laughs> he, he hates his is wife. A, he's a misogynistic asshole. He is. And he just starts screaming at his wife, Get the phone book. Get the book. Get the book. Get the book. I was like, God damn, Carl, calm down. I get your lazy she's... ass up and get I... the book. I wanted her to get divorce papers ASAP because what what the hell this man offering you? Y'all in a trailer. In the middle of the desert. In the middle of the desert. And he yelling at you all the time. Yeah. Well, Doesn't apparently. deserve that. No, no, no. no, no. Mm. I and feel Carl like. Carl does see the meteor shower and the asteroid. Tell me that, like, honestly, this whole plot line and scene, I don't think it's even needed. No. NASA it's... has the technology to be like, oh, there's, like, this weird meteor shower. Let's look. Right. Oh, shit. But Truman <sighs> does say at one point that... They have so much space to look at. They don't... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and the but they don't have it in the budget. Right. The government. So they... he... Maybe Na NASA does have to rely on these independent stargazers if you will who are just happy like like carl's a piece of trash sure right. but like I'm, I'm glad he was looking up into the sky when he was i think i think that it could have been like a one-off line like we had somebody called in they they mm -hmm. spotted something blah 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 and and it would have been no problem i j just like to have this female in this this role just so that this man can essentially bash her for no reason mm -hmm. and and play out that nagging wife stereotype, which fits with Bay. So I'm not surprised, but which, I just felt like it was unnecessary. In Deep Impact, you have, wasn't it Elijah Wood's character that saw the asteroid coming and he, like he got notoriety from it, but it was a much gentler like character to digest. Like the... Carl didn't have to go as hard as he did. Right. Carl could go. Yeah. Carl yeah. could have been like, hey, baby, I know you need me right now. I get it. I get it, baby. I get it. Look, look, sweetheart. There's a giant rock. <laughs> coming to Earth. I need to call the government. I get it, baby. I get you want to see? Do you want to see? <laughs> I but name I'm it after you. 
<laughs> yeah, baby. I'll leave it after you. Do you do you, not because you're a life soul sucking bitch, which I <laughs> came from. Not because of that. Like that, like when he says that and, and that wife has that moment of like, oh, Carl, you care about me. And then he just He's no, like, I don't. No. <sighs> Although Gosh. I will say, as misogynistic as this role was, if Samuel L. Jackson had been in the role and he's like, bitch, I thought you were gonna I would have laughed my ass off. And yeah. There's a problem there. I know. Yeah. I know there. <laughs> Where's that I stem can... from, Danielle? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> it's because Samuel Jackson does no wrong. Yeah, he does, but I don't care. Yeah, I look. I look. I look away. Don't call me a motherfucker. Call me a motherfucker. Yeah, I don't care. Now. I don't care. So now we're in New York, did y'all? What happens in New York? That's the CGI. In this part, there's a part where things are blowing up and this man runs up to the seat, to the screen, almost it feels like. And I don't know if he's wearing like an I Heart New York shirt or whatever, but it feels like when you go to Disney World and like how you're playing and they have those screens and you're like in the scene or something. Yeah. That's what it felt like. <laughs> I had to pause because I could not stop laughing at that. You see the Empire State Building just fall off or whatever, but the poor dog that Eddie Griffin, he doesn't have, I don't know what his character name is, but he, his poor dog gets sucked up into a hole. I thought the dog would be choking with, with the, the leash and whatnot, but he also attacks these like set up Godzillas, which is kind of yeah. cute. They trained him to do that. Um, but yeah. Little that, Richard. That, <laughs> that, 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 was, that was a dog little richard that was little, richard. <laughs> little richard little richard come back and i said look at all these people dying but everybody in the audience i know they're like the poor dog help the dog well and michael bay says you never kill the dog like, that's know what? one of his rules white people will revolt <laughs> i'm telling you <laughs> okay so i did not look at the indb but how did they get Mark Curry to do such a minimal role in this movie is beyond me. It's a Michael Bay movie. They were probably, his agent was like, you want to be in a small part in a Michael Bay movie? I mean, he just came off The Rock and Jerry Bruckheimer. I mean, Jerry, mm. they they made Days of Thunder and all those movies. So everybody wants to get in on that. I was literally like, is that Mr. Cooper? <laughs> and then that woman in the back seat's like i want to go oh, shopping, shopping. <laughs> <He's> like, <"Bitch." laughs> do you yeah, not but... see read the room <laughs> so the, the so the, the special effects in that in that first new york attack scene like some of it's dated but some of the details that are pretty horrifying like when the Empire State Building gets oh hit gosh. and falls and you hear the person screaming as they're free falling with the tip of the tower. Yeah. And then you the body hits the car. Ooh. Uh, yeah. And then the World Trade Center buildings, one of them is like on it, fire. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, this is too ominous for yeah. what we know is to come later. A hundred percent. Like I literally like gasped out loud when the Empire State Building fell and people were falling out of the windows. It was just, even 20 I, plus years later, it was too soon. <laughs> I just oh. want these disaster films to leave New York alone. This is my PSA. Leave New York the fuck alone, okay? <laughs> like, I understand the aliens attack. Maybe they would figure that's the big place they attack. But the asteroid don't know fucking New York. <laughs> Go find goddamn Wisconsin or Montana where all that weird shit be happening and shit. <laughs> god damn it leave new york alone ohio's a big place there you yeah go. and and quite frankly i live in florida but i wouldn't mind on the screen to see it get fucked up a little bit you know what i'm saying or like a tidal wave from the meteors yeah. landing in the ocean and just like completely decimating florida yeah like something but or as my friend andrew likes to send me the the cartoon of bugs bunny cutting florida off of the <laughs> map <laughs> <laughs> all right let's okay. let's get into the real meat and potatoes which is we finally yes. get to the the rig the oil yeah, rig so, so truman comes up with this plan where they need someone who is well versed in 
drilling to teach astronauts how to drill so that they can put a nuke inside the asteroid and blow it up. Cause their plan is if you blow it up just right, it'll split into two pieces and circumvent the earth. Solid, solid science. Solid plan. <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever Billy Bob says of this movie, I'm going to say, okay. Cause like yeah. in every other movie, he's like this dirt bag more or less. <laughs> And here he is in a suit being the voice of reason, just yeah. like yeah. looking up and just shaking his head slightly like. Mm. And then like taking care of Liv Tyler while her whole family is on an asteroid. My heart, he, like it. he carried in this movie for real. He did. I, I know he has gone on record saying a lot of the actors in this movie and even the director have gone on record saying it's trash. I without- think Billy Bob was just like, it's all right. It's a movie. Like he, he has admitted. Made it, yeah, go ahead. He did say like it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Bay thinks that Armageddon is his worst film, and he he said, "I will apologize for Armageddon because we had to do the whole movie in sixteen weeks." He told the Miami Herald in 2013 that it was a massive undertaking that was not fair to the movie. I would redo the entire third act if I could. I'm surprised he hasn't tried. With my yeah, why didn't he like Zack Snyder cut it? We We want the big cut. We want the big cut. Um, I will agree because I read that fact before I watched the movie, and then as I was watching the final third, it does feel rushed, and a lot of the time I'm like, I don't even know what's happening. Just like lots (laughs) of shit crashing into other shit, and AJ trying to get to the freedom or the independence whichever one didn't blow up right so uh, not wrong michael bay not wrong but you did hit everyone in the fields except for me because i walked out of the room for the sad straws are coming out (laughs) he's walking out (laughs) so they have 18 days and they're calling this a global event it will be a man killer so which I was surprised that NASA alone was like, we'll take care of it, world. This like, is this this is the like third or fourth movie we've done that this has happened, Jackie. Yeah. When we did Independence Day, they were doing the same bullshit. Like when we make these movies, America is the only thing that yeah. matters. And I'm sorry. I don't believe that the smartest people in the whole world, the whole world are in the United States. It, it's a mm. it's a global problem where we need the brightest minds from the globe solving (laughs) it instead of America going, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to find an oil rig driller (laughs) and we're going to use him to save the world. How about it boys? So it's like, everybody's on the call, right? China's (laughs) like, okay, America, any ideas? So what we going to (laughs) do is we going to get these oil rig drillers we gonna send them to space. They gonna get to drilling. We gonna put a bomb in it, and yeah, that shit is done. <laughs> Problem solved. I was really America. Pleasantly That's how we surprised. do things here. Exactly. <laughs> I was pleasantly surprised that we did get Lev the cosmonaut. He is just a delight, and we'll get to him. And he's literally like the One saving grace favorite he's the hero of the film I mean, yes he is. and he did what everybody does when shit don't work you gotta hit it <laughs> what you mean the tv don't work did you hit it <laughs> give it a love that, tap <laughs> that's line in the movie when he's just like american part like american ship russian ship <laughs> all made in taiwan okay yes. <laughs> facts so now we hear lagrange by ZZ Top playing as they're heading out to the offshore offshore oil rig owned by Harry Stamper, played by Bruce Willis. He's literally hitting golf balls at Greenpeace. So and this awesome. is this is why we are where we are at with climate change, because that was that is the mindset we yes. our government, our everybody had about saving the environment. But I do want to talk about something very important in this movie, which is the hair. 
What's Who's going it? on, Bruce Willis? Uh, he's he, balding. Well, and he, this was made right after Fifth Element, where he was bleach blonde, and I think his hair was still recovering from all the bleaching. Mm. Girl, that looks like a really bad strip of Brazilian, like ready to <laughs> just just wax it right off. Because what is that? Is breakage. <laughs> I didn't know if that was his hair or they said let's put a piece on. It is bad, duh. Okay. I, I don't disagree, but I I feel like my theory is correct, and I'm gonna double check. Like Fifth Element definitely came out in '97. Yeah, so. you might be you might be right about that, but it was it was downhill from there. And then also Will Patton's hair, he was balding, but. <laughs> Like, they were just also swirling was... <laughs> it to make it look like he wasn't. And then yeah. Owen Wilson, I'm like, did he get a transplant, hair transplant since that movie came out? Because mm. his hair looks like, like he's really balding in that movie. First of all, how about, I didn't remember he was in this movie. When I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> is this a Mandela effect? What the fuck was he in this movie? Did well, not because recall. He was not on the original rig that I can mm. remember. No. They just went and got him off of yeah. his ranch. And there's another guy that just dies. He has black hair. I don't know who he is to this day. Like, I'm even looking at the list of people. I don't know who he is. And I was like, it felt as if someone just placed him in, like, like <laughs> I got a bootleg copy and someone did, like, a funny little insert. Like, I was like, who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> Whoa. I, I know I'm not alone. Do you know who I'm talking about? He's he's the, he's the random dude. I don't even remember his name. <laughs> right. Matt. I, <laughs> he's got black hair. He was at the strip, in the strip club scene. Mm-hmm. He tried to be all tough and stuff when they try to walk, like you might mind right. your own business or something. I but feel not he... Max. Max is like the, he's the curvier guy who, who yeah, he's getting yeah. his tattoo with his mama. No, not Max. It's the guy who on his list of things, he has two women that he wants to become American citizens without any questions. Oh. That guy. Okay. See, but it doesn't even matter. We don't even have to know. But like, if you watch this movie, as soon as you see him, you'll be like, who was that man? And mm -hmm. you know what? It, it's also because I can look at this entire cast and say, I've seen these people in other things. Like even yes. the the character of Gruber, he was on As the World Turns. <laughs> Mama knew, okay? <laughs> this guy, never seen him in my life. Not a Sims character I recognize, okay? <laughs> was it Noonan? Well, I mean, Jason Isaac shows up. And I'm like, also another what the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, Lucius Malfoy's in this movie? What's going on? As my mother liked to tell me last night, he died. <laughs> he did. It was, uh, my mother got very confused even. And I have to watch her now. She's not on Facebook, but like randomly she hears things on the, on the streets. I don't know. And she's like, did you hear this happen? And I was like, You've got to stop spreading this fake news. She said a, a star from the Harry Potter movie. He had white hair in the Harry Potter movies. He died. And I was like, Jason Isaacs died? Man, the guy that it was, not even close to a Harry Potter movie. He was in a movie called Warlock. <laughs> <laughs> not to d laugh at the man dying, but just like the disinformation, the misinformation from my mother. Hilarious. I love how she got from harry potter to warlock because they're both kind of about wizards <laughs> she was there she was in the ballpark god, god bless her <laughs> and you oh, so Christine. we're back up the rig right and we see harry and i do love the relationship between him and what is his name is AJ? it chick chick oh chick yeah oh that's yeah. like his second in command and his voice of reason and this is when they find out that aj drills right too much overnight like they had they were supposed to turn the drills off and he did it he like turned them back on or something and so he goes to go like tell him about himself 
And so we kind of get a glimpse of their their dynamic. But we do see some very nicely mani- manicured toes well, sticking out of the bed. So <laughs> we know there's a lady in there. Surprise, surprise. And so they go, they get into kind of an argument, but he, AJ says, sorry, which also it's really fun that Liv Tyler is in another movie where the guy, her love interest is AJ, like in Empire Records. Mm -hmm. And then he, Harry realizes that AJ is apologizing too quickly and finds out that his daughter is the woman under the covers. And he's like, I'll be right back. And AJ is like, I got to get the fuck out of here. How dangerous is it to be shooting a gun on an oil rig? Yes. <laughs> this is America. We have guns everywhere. You know <laughs> I I mean? know. But like you shouldn't shoot it on an oil rig. Kesera sera. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think I, I think it's really cute though, the fact that Harry could tell AJ was lying. You know, yeah. almost like they already have that father son dynamic. Yeah. A hundred percent. And and I really, really like the character of Grace in this movie. Mm. Like, she's very no-nonsense. Like, she's, like, yelling at her dad while, like, he's chasing AJ around. And she's just like, Harry, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stop it. So I, I really did like that. Just a very strong female character, not someone who's going to back down to these men who raised her on the oil rig. Yeah. And I, if, go ahead. Oh, pardon me, Danielle. You have to no, no, <laughs> no. It's good. I, I was just gonna say it, it's it's nice to see a strong female character and not overly sexualized. Yeah, yeah. I, I do don't... find I do find that that was great, but that graham cracker, uh, animal cracker scene. I was like, oh, it's not so bad. But then he, he like pulls back her dress and like again another unnecessary yeah. thing. But that's but it was not bae. overly gratuitous no it wasn't you're and right like i agree and in the realm of hollywood and then especially in the realm of michael bay that was incredibly tame but they had to because this was his first pg-13 movie and she was only 20 when they shot this yeah wow. she was really young because i don't I, yeah i don't recall any of those like quote unquote male gaze shots mm-hmm. you know where they yes. pan from the foot up. I've, I don't remember any of that for, for her character. Very yeah, true. And even the way she dresses, it was like in very conservative long dresses and stuff. It was not anything where she's like running around in a white tank top or anything like that. Yes, true. The only, I, I think they did a good job with her. And even when we meet, what is it, Watts later? she's you know another strong female the problem Mm -hmm. is that this movie does not pass the Bechdel test Uh, because these two strong females do not ever talk to each other no I was also pleasantly surprised surprised pleasant I was just happy to see that there was (laughs) (laughs) I was trying to figure out how to phrase it my brain broke for a second the representation in the movie like we got a lot of named characters who were people of color that were pretty fleshed out characters. It wasn't just upholding the white main character. I felt like they each had a job to do and they did that job. Well, like bear was like Grace's protector. And when Harry started Mm. shooting at AJ and stuff, bear stepped in and was like, Harry, you don't want to fucking do this. Like, (laughs) Just give him, my, give him my man some time. Go, go, yeah. go. <laughs> Which is, I, I think from a, for that time period, from a representation point, like it was okay. I mean, it, it did all right. I, I, I do like that this is Michael Clark Duncan's first role. I yeah. do think that with this cast of characters, there could have been more, there could have been room for more, especially if you look at like who is on the oil rigs. Yeah. But I I was glad to see Michael Clark Duncan. He just has such a great range. And this was he because he's such a big guy and especially just the stereotypes of, of black men in general. And especially when they're big, he always did a really great job of showing softer sides of himself 
um, in that range, which we see completely in the green mile. So I, you see those flickers in this movie, although he was having a hard time when he first started to shoot the movie, because when they cast him, there was just magic and he was feeling very insecure. So Bruce Willis and Michael Bay had to pull him to the side and say, like, we want to see the guy we saw in in the audition and so after that conversation he was able to kind of turn things around which is great because they were thinking about recasting him which would have sucked you know I, i'm glad it worked out because like you said he just has this magic about him where he can be hard and soft at the same time and yeah. has such great comedic timing <laughs> yeah yeah he um, does. so for real yeah he was a gift he was a gift yeah. and i'm glad we have him in in movie form just to have him eternally with us yeah yeah too bad he fell for that damn omarosa bitch. <laughs> 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 so we get introduced to a couple of other characters on the rig rock i just wrote his name down as rock but i know rock hound rock hound he's yeah. a dog <laughs> that's I, steve buscemi's character which i feel so bad because when steve buscemi got pitched this movie originally he was excited because it was it was a different character than what he was used to he's always playing these like slimy guys mm -hmm. and this guy was like a hero and sweet originally and then once he got cast they changed it to make him a slimy guy again and he was just like what the hell? But he did push for them to make him a genius. That was his idea. Because mm. again, he's sick of being typecast as this gross dude, you know? Yeah. Good for him for advocating for himself. Yeah. We do find out that AJ loves Grace and they've been dating for five months. And Harry has been in his unawares about that. But Harry does come back and say, you've had lack of options. Like, he's literally <laughs> the youngest one on the rig. Facts. Honestly, I mean, she hasn't really gone out there. And, like, what happens? Let's say, okay, now they're married. My dad said yes to this guy and approved of him. I can't divorce this bitch. And saved his, like, my dad sacrificed his life for this guy. Right. Life. That's, That's a, a lot, lot of pressure. pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but okay, like, you know how they say, you know, we marry our parents. Oh, Lord and Jesus. I pray not. Jesus. We so either in a subconscious or like if, if you're conscious about it, a con conscience. Oh, gosh. Even if you're aware of it or not, like in some form or other, like there are elements that we gravitate to. And like, who else is Grace going to like you think she's gonna be attracted to a soft boy from hollywood <laughs> you, you know especially how she grew up like she's, she she's was raised on the rig <laughs> yeah, i don't but, want her dating a roughneck like us but then you see how she carries herself so professionally how is she uh, were those like uh like chinese investors or something where she's speaking fluent mandarin or whatever i think so i don't think it was japanese but i could it, be wrong I, I don't know, but she was like out there getting it done. She can handle herself. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I think she's a good judge of character and people, if anything. That's what right. I would read up until that point in that movie, the way she carries herself. She's not this, I don't know. She's a strong character. She has, she has her values, ethics, morals all set. Even though she talks to Harry, I felt, I felt a little bad for him. Cause when she's like, you're emotionally immature, like, I don't know. There's, I don't, she called it like a disability or something. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm like, whoa. And he even takes that. He's like, hey, I might be an immature father. Okay. But I'm still your father. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think that Liv Tyler, she, she did a perfect job for this role yes. because she always does, she always does a really good job of that line of strong, but also very, almost like childlike innocence mm -hmm. to her. But she turned on the role for Grace twice before she finally accepted. I'm, I'm not sure what made her change her mind, but Denise Richards was considered for the role. And I just wonder, I, I you know what? I think I could have, I could have seen Denise Richards in this role too. Denise I think Liv Richards, Tyler was perfect, but yes. Yeah. I think this, Denise Richards would have just come with a little bit more of an edge and not yeah. that softness. Yeah. Mm. 
something I read about, especially about Liv Tyler and Ben, is that they're them being cast as romantic opposites for this was awkward for them. Oh, yeah, because they, they they oh they've been interviewed about it. They they talk about just how they Ben sees her as a sister. They know each other's boyfriends, girlfriends as they you know work together. They they know each other's families. They know each other really well, so they're comfortable with each other. But yeah, like kissing and being all romantic little awkward for them apparently i feel like they pulled it off pretty well yeah, oh, yeah. i i think they did a great job yeah. but the ro- the romantic subplot between aj and grace in the movie armageddon was due to the success of titanic so in the original script they did not include a romance and instead they had more emphasis on truman and his relationship with Her- harry it was added after the success of Titanic because of the success with teenage girls. So most of the romantic scenes were written by Scott Ro- Rosenberg and were filmed later in production. But it's also funny because Bruce Willis and Michael Bay would harass essentially Ben Affleck and say, your role is not even needed. We can cut you at any time. You were just beefed up because of the romantic stuff. Like they really ribbed on him about that. I wonder if that's why Ben Affleck has practically disowned this movie and like openly makes fun of Armageddon. Yeah, I'm curious to know what his relationship was with Bruce Willis. I'm not going to lie. Like I've heard people have some you know some people really like Bruce Willis but Bruce Willis has had some issues with people other actors who are like I don't want to work with him again or they had some tension so I I I just wonder if he was a little annoyed about like he got pitched this movie he was supposed to be the star him and Billy Bob Doran and now he's having to like deal with Ben Affleck you know yeah gotta love a man's ego yeah even their chemistry was great yeah yeah but when reading the notes i also wonder if ben affleck was just very like boisterous and and voiced a lot of opinions Mm -hmm. because there are a lot of things that he were his idea or you know i just wonder if maybe he was saying too much for the liking of michael bay and bruce willis and Bruce Willis didn't like working with Michael Bay either. So I don't know. It was a lot of t- t- testosterone on that set, I think. Well, and Steve Buscemi was just there because he wanted a new house. <laughs> 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 Literally uh, why he said he took the role of uh, Rock Hound. <laughs> okay, you can tell get... he had fun. He uh, had fun absolutely. in this movie. Yeah. He chewed every scene he was in. Yeah. 100%. So the government shows up, a colonel shows up and is like, Harry, we need you. And Harry's like, okay, well, I'll, I'll go with you, but we, you have to take my daughter Grace with you as well. Cause she, he doesn't want to leave her on the rig with AJ. <laughs> Jeez Louise. So they go. This is uh, where they, they meet Truman. Yes. Billy and Bob. Truman fills them in and they're like, it's, it's classified top secret like no one knows we're not letting anyone the public know because then there will be mass pandemonium but we need you to train these astronauts and harry pushes back and he's like it's actually easier to train my crew to be astronauts than to train astronauts to drill because it's so like such a specific skill and it's so nuanced I used a word Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, where it, it's a feeling that you have and knowing when you to pull back, knowing when to keep going, it, it's not something that can be easily taught. I just find it so interesting because I, I believe him, but I don't think it's easy to be an astronaut either. Like the, they all fail their physicals. Yeah. And I just think them going to space is definitely going to not be good on the body. Yeah. I I have a lot of questions about some of the things physically that happen to them. Like when they come back from space, how they're just walking. 
I've seen all those other movies. The 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 zero gravity. I don't know much about science, but other movies have taught me a bitch can't walk right away. And and Ken pointed out because they tempor- temporarily make the the Soviet space station have gravity. And Ken's like, that cosmonaut hasn't is not walking around after 18 months of no gravity. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, no. That's not how that works. <laughs> yeah, none of none of that made any sense to me. No. You see, when they landed and they're doing that walk, that wasn't slow motion. That was how fast they were moving. <laughs> oh, like, oh, gravity's a bitch. Guys. My my muscles don't work like they used to. <laughs> yeah, like. Like, I can't imagine being like someone a little bit more heavy set, like Max, like yeah. being up in space and then right. or even Bear himself. Bear was a bigger guy. Yeah. Yeah. That was too much. Like to be a regular schmo, like sh- schmuck off the street. <laughs> like, like, again, they didn't pass their physicals and it. Like, wouldn't you think that even the, tr- they even say the, tr- can they survive the trip? Yeah. Right. I right. I almost like to see instead of so many like rocks killing people like someone someone having a medical emergency up there because they were not physically fit to go into space Mm -hmm. although there 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 were so many like dramatic moments i was like i could deal with like two less of these (laughs) right like everything can't be fucking happening at once (laughs) Uh, yeah when the president calls in he's like you know what it's it's not working let's let's just blow it up let's let's (laughs) blow it up and it's how american is that like just do it yes yeah we're just gonna sacrifice these people probably just like classify the document and just throw it in a file and no one's ever gonna know except for grace because she's the only one who knows the men up there right yeah hot hot mess get rid of grace then Dang it. I'm just going to get rid of Grace. Yeah. I was so, thinking to myself, like, who could die? And I'm not emotionally, like, upset about it. The guy we can't name from the rig? <laughs> I was like, okay, he gone. All the right. guy who even wanted Owen to get Wilson, those two women. I was like, eh, uh, okay. I didn't even remember that bitch was in the movie. So it makes no <laughs> difference that he's I, dead now. Like, Owen, Owen's character felt like the... Like again, he's on a ranch. It even looks like like they even filled in his scene. Like it, like they're like, you know what? Let's just shoot a, a shadowed guy on a horseback, and we'll do a close up of him as he's riding the horse, and that's him. We'll add him in. But I, I did appreciate his one line where he's like, he's just like, guys, this is like this is like deep blue hero stuff right now. Like, horse I'm in. I liked when he's like, we're not, we're only in the beginning parts of space we even we haven't even gotten into deep space and i feel like that's outer the kind space. of outer space <laughs> and i feel like that's the kind of science math that i would have there's okay so there's space and then there's outer space <laughs> and then they ask you what's beyond outer space and you're like F- black I hole don't- Orion's belt. <laughs> oh, it's Sagittarius. Lives on Orion's belt. Your mama, stop asking me questions. <laughs> I also love that as NASA brings Harry in, they have stolen his patented right. drill design and have built it incorrectly. Yeah, and he he, I love how he takes him to to court on that and um i love when his guys come in eventually because he tells nasa like fine i will help and bring you got to bring my guys i do love how and they have to go find all his his guys because they've left the rig and i feel like that's very authentic Mm -hmm. we have a really good friend that works on a rig and he does lots of adventures when (laughs) he leaves not like these guys but you know I'm sure it's not always so easy to just like rush back or for the government Mm -hmm. to find where you're at, you know? So they decide there's no contingency plan, which there is, we find out later because the president tries to blow up the entire team, but they're going to take two shuttles up with two teams. So it'll be a team of astronauts 
and then the team of drillers and they'll be separated into two shuttles. Now we have to round up the team like Danielle was saying. So then we get this scene behind me, which I <laughs> love, where Michael Clark Duncan is on a motorcycle and he just yells, come and get Big Papa as police officers are chasing him. <laughs> and and that this is... Act- go-, go ahead, go ahead. Oh. And that actually became one of his nicknames in Hollywood after he improv that line and then it became one of his nicknames. And this is how I know this is a Hollywood movie and this is written by a white person because there's no fucking way a black (laughs) man on a motorcycle is going to be running running away, outrunning the cops and I honestly would not be surprised if one of the fucking cops shot him and be like, oh, my bad. We were supposed to save him. (laughs) I I forgot our mission. (laughs) But see, maybe that brings some, that grounds grounds the scene a little bit because they need him. They're like, no, 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 no. You can't, you can't shoot him. (laughs) Right. I want to, I'm going to go to court and say, your honor, I would like to put put to the court that there is a case where a black man can be riding on a motorcycle and not be shot. Please pull up the Armageddon clip. Like, <laughs> ma'am, that is fiction. Exhibit A. It's in the archives. It's in the archives. Please bring it up. Bring it up. It is in the Criterion Collection. Yeah. It is suitable as evidence. <laughs> the case i rest my case <laughs> nasa uses this footage i can use this footage. exactly right. Right. so we have to go collect aj it seems like he has his own tiny little rinky dink rig how much time has passed since harry has gone to nasa and like how like- quickly can you put up a, an oil rig business because it, it couldn't have, have been more than two days. days. Well, I, I, what I'm assuming is he has that little patch of, of land that he can drill on. And he has his rig for when he goes home. He can just start start it up again. I guess so. But that shit was like <laughs> hilarious to me. He had that little cardboard sign <laughs> outside. AJ's rig. <laughs> Real Michael Bay probably. Michael Bay probably made Ben do it. He's like, nah, make your sign. We're not, we're not doing that in the budget, Ben. We already paid for your teeth. Go make the sign. And I like in this scene where Harry is like, I need you to come do something for me because they really haven't filled the guys in. They're just kind of bringing them in so that they can inform them all together. But Harry personally goes to get AJ and he's literally like, I got a job. And there's not a job that I on this earth that I want to work with you on, but I need you to come with me. And I thought that was a really clever line. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then Ed snags him. He's like, what are you talking about? (laughs) What do you mean? He I I feel like Ben gives lots of little brother energy in this movie. And I would say that he looks pretty good in this movie. Yeah. Like there's. I've never been attracted to Ben Affleck. Like I, like I wouldn't say he's one of my hotties. List Not on your laminated list. No, but it's laminated. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I am like, oh, I would say probably the best he's ever looked to me is Pearl Harbor. I don't know what kind of oil they were using on that movie. <laughs> Just saying. Ben was glistening in this one for sure. <laughs> yes, yes. So he, they get the guys, they tell them what's up, they start the training, they meet all the astronaut guys. And I love how like they do those shots where they're like, too cool for school. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm an astronaut. <laughs> and they make a lot of references to the movie, the right stuff in this in this movie. Mm-hmm. And so they they get the guys, you know, they're training them up and they have this pool scene where they're so that they could feel like what it feels like to not have gravity and whatever. And apparently that pool scene, only Ben Affleck and Bruce Willis were allowed to film in that. So they convinced NASA 
first they I think they convinced Air, the Air Force to partner with them in this movie, and then that helped get NASA to agree to to help to an extent. But there was a lot of stuff that they were around that they couldn't touch or mm-hmm. or they had access to that they shouldn't have. And Ben said that he like got into one of he got to like peek into one of the actual real shuttles and he got in trouble but they were poking around which is kind of cool that's like the best part of being an actor probably like getting right. into little, little pieces like that and it's like oh yeah i'm playing an astronaut but here's a real <laughs> ship where are the aliens i do like that ben affleck asked michael bay if it he's like wouldn't it be easier for nasa to train astronauts how to drill rather than training drillers to be astronauts and bay told affleck to shut up (laughs) shut up ben and he said the reason well the reasoning behind sending the drillers rather than training the astronauts is actually explained in the movie but like just these details like you don't even have to tell me that they fucking hated each other yeah. But these details that I can't find. I'm sure it was not just like, shut up. It was like, shut the fuck up, Ben. <laughs> you don't get paid <laughs> enough to think, motherfucker. I fix your teeth. Shut them chompers down. Go get a Coke and smile, okay? <laughs> get a Coke and smile. Be quiet. <laughs> so we do see they're going through the process of training there's one scene where Bear's like not listening as he's being debriefed by I don't remember her name, the the lady astronaut. I don't think lady Jennifer astronaut Watts. is better. I think that's what Michael Bay wanted to call her first. <laughs> you are lady astronaut. <laughs> Jennifer Watts. So Watts yeah, is Watts. debriefing them about how to use their spacesuits because they have boosters or thrusters or whatever to keep them grounded because like anything could make them literally fly off I was very nervous even though I've seen the movie I was like (laughs) someone go fly off that damn (laughs) little piece of rock so she's like bear and he the way his neck snaps (laughs) back to attention (laughs) and she's like if you're not listening and I kick you in the nuts in space, you're going to fly off this asteroid. You better pay attention, which comes full circle later. Yeah. Not you the nuts. Bear kicking, become but the... a little boy there. He's just yes. little, he's like, he's like, what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> and the next scene, Ken had a lot of opinions on. So the next scene is AJ and Grace hiding out in what was explained to me was an Apollo 5 F1 engine and Ken's like they're like sitting and making out in a piece of history he was highly offended the BMW no no, no the, the they're, they're sitting like in a thruster in, yeah they're sitting in a engine where he's kissing her shoulder oh that scene Never yeah mind. and they're Harry in peeks in right hanger. he's yeah. like watching his I, I don't I don't I would not feel comfortable with my daddy seeing some man putting no. his lips on my back. No. But, like if you're the dad, you can like peek in a second, maybe to be like <laughs> give a look, be like, okay, and then turn around. But don't linger, Brett. What are you doing, Harry? <laughs> it was a lot. I was like, he's still there. <laughs> Jesus. And this is also the scene where AJ proposes mm-hmm. to you to Grace and she says yes. So when Ken was planning on proposing to me, he was supposed to propose on on the ground at Fenway Park. We got too drunk and we missed the tour, so that didn't happen. So it happened later (laughs) in Boston Commons. But the day before, we were on a battleship because he likes ships. And we were in like the turret, the gun turret. And he said he had the thought, wouldn't it be cool to propose in here? No. (laughs) I'm glad he did not, but this is what made me think of that. Like AJ proposing in an F1 engine <laughs> has similar vibes to proposing in a gun turret on a battleship. And I'm very glad you did not propose in a, you, a ship. I, I I just want to agree with that would have been cool. I'm sure the way you were proposed to was lovely, but that 
that would have been cool. Like, it would have like, been cool. Like, baby, I'm going to defend you like a turret. <laughs> I'm going to be here for you solid like this ship. <laughs> When Jackie called to tell me, it was a lot easier to tell that, explain that the proposal than if she had to explain the ship thing because then I would have interrupted me like, what you mean it was on a boat? A live boat? Was it a cruise? What you mean a ship? It would have just totally ruined the moment. Yep. So I'm glad that it did. Yeah. So that is my correlation of AJ proposing in a F1 engine. <laughs> Did you grow up with a lack of parental supervision? Do you know all the lyrics to The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Remember Mayor McCheese and the Fry Guys? Have an inexplicable love for the California Raisins? Can you remember Madonna's original face? Then you might be a part of the Doom Generation. Laugh until you cry with us each week as we stumble blindly through the memories of the movie and other random things that doomed us to be the salty, sarcastic, sardonic ladies you want to hang with. You know us. You love us. You can't fucking live without us. Doom, Doom Generation. Generation. Available everywhere you find podcasts. We can so, continue now. <laughs> so, uh, they they continue training, whatnot, but there is a fight that happens because they are split into teams. AJ is the lead and in on one of the teams, and he is drilling, but AJ drills from the gut. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. He the NASA machines kind of have like a break point at certain places and he feels like he can go past it. Mm -hmm. And also Bear is not comfortable because he's always used to working with Harry. And I think for AJ, he's kind of just not just doing the mission, but he's fighting for to get from out of Harry's shadow and to prove himself. And he's being a little dick about it in Mm -hmm. a sense. And so they're everybody at NASA is watching and it's just like, this is who you have saved, trying to save our lives. This is ridiculous. And so Harry realizes that everyone just needs a break too, like before they, they go up there. So he demands to Truman that like his team gets to go out in the world. So they have like their last night on earth essentially. Mm -hmm. And of course, some of the guys do some typical things. if, if I may, I, I, we, the whole, I think we skipped over the whole medical and, and, and the psych evaluation scene <laughs> yes. that had one of my favorite lines of the movie where I believe it was, was it Max who was like, I just came here to drill. And the nurse comes out with this silver metallic <laughs> phallic object. Yes. And she's like, so did I. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am. <laughs> That woman is a really funny comedian and I was looking to try to figure to find her name so we could say it but yes that did crack me up quite a bit and I love how first of all why the black man had to have high cholesterol I peeped that (laughs) Um, but I love when Bear like got to his skivvies and like started stripping (laughs) off his hospital gown when they were pretty much like you everything is wrong with you all of y'all are sick literally and he's like, be alive. this is healthy what are you talking about like, yes <laughs> so i found the actress her name is ellen cleghorn and she i i feel like she might have been on either saturday night live or something back in the day but i i've remember her from other movies and tv shows and just always thought she was really funny so i like her little cameo in armageddon so now so this you- is their last hurrah before they have to board the shuttles right and so they all choose different ways to spend their <laughs> last night <laughs> steven do you want to go into what they did on their last hurrah <laughs> I mean, before we get, before I mention what a lot of the, what of those boys did, I am heartbroken with Chick. Yeah. Because uh, Chick O'Neill did him dirty. It, oh, she did him so dirty. He's getting, and I'm, and I'm sure they divorced for valid reasons on her end. Like, I don't know if it's like, I don't know if he's a gambler or what it was. I don't know what, but when that little boy comes out and he's like, who is that mommy? And she's like, just a salesman. I I I took her side automatically. I think Chick is great and whatnot, but he's on the rig all the time. Mm. He he's gam all I've seen about him so far, he's on the rig. He does whatever Harry needs him to do. 
Harry is in the rig is his priority and he gambles. Mm -hmm. He had all that time off. He didn't look like fighting to get his child was a priority. Yes. Court said, but he could have appealed. He's not fighting. Mm -hmm. So I think he fucked up. I think he did something because I think the, the wife, baby mama is trying to protect the baby the son yeah. like it's too confusing for him because clearly this man is not consistent and that's not what children need yeah totally fair still broke my heart though like, <laughs> it, even, it was sad yeah because he, he doesn't fight it even chick even chick would agree with you because he was just like he's, he didn't say anything about like i'm your dad he just said wow he's getting big yeah but it was yeah tragic. The, and left the, the other little boy shuttle on the stoop mm. oh yeah but the other boys <laughs> uh they're off at a at a very a very prestigious looking club with, <laughs> working with, ladies with mm -hmm. working ladies there doing their things just having fun spending all their government money <laughs> no no it's not the government that's the is that the money that it's the mob's that, money yeah that rock hound god yeah they even the guy was like you don't look you, you don't look too healthy you're gonna be okay he's like oh not any better than you're gonna be <laughs> That's terrifying. But then they go to a club, they go with some strippers, have some fun. Rockhound makes a few friends. All the boys make a few friends because all the other men at the club are like, hey, you're hogging all the ladies. And they're like, <laughs> whatever, man, we don't care. I don't think we see, what's Michael's character's name? Bear. Bear. Wait, I don't think we see Bear at the club with them. I don't think so. Yeah. Rockhound, I, Max, and the other unnamed astronaut. Yeah, <laughs> the guy who I think was just CGI'd into this version. <laughs> I don't know. And then we see AJ and Grace having a little picnic with the graham crackers and the bad Australian. It's accent. an animal cracker, Jackie. Sorry, the animal crackers. <laughs> and, a B and they have a BMW. I would say like, it looks like a fucking commercial, it does. right? It do it doesn't even look like it fits in the movie. It's super weird. The whole thing is cute, but it it does it does take you out of the movie a little bit. But I know that the BMW being there was sponsored. Oh, makes sense. It's they a had to pay for product Benzie placement. Somehow. Yes, that was they had to pay money. for it somehow. There you go. <laughs> I'm just questioning, were they done fornicating or were they getting to fornicating? Like, why is was, her dress wide open? I think that was the foreplay. Gotcha. I don't want no damn fake ass animal crackers on my belly. That mm. ain't doing it for me. <laughs> like a friend told me once, don't yuck their yum. Okay? Sorry, you're right. You're right. <laughs> some people like some people like a good animal cracker gazelle galloping <laughs> up your belly button i don't know okay it's not my yum i don't get it did they uh, eat the animal crackers afterwards he put one in her drawers so maybe he was going down to town maybe he and was he took visiting snacks in with the him. zoo <laughs> oh snackosaurus you need a uh, carbo load sometimes you know you just gotta get ready <laughs> got some energy in you <laughs> And I also felt a little ick about the fact that you have this scene and your dad is song is playing over it. Yeah. I don't want to miss a thing. You're yeah. I was just like, that's interesting. There choice. was a lot of Aerosmith. And like I did not recognize my Y2K self how many Aerosmith songs are in this movie. Yeah. Because I don't want to miss a thing like overshadows everything. Yeah. But and it, it was so hard not to sing every time that goddamn song came on. So good. It so is. Good. It it's a really good good song. <laughs> Even the and, club. It was like that Aerosmith song where you like you kiss a devil, you piss off a saint or something. It yes. was a pretty dope song. <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, if they were trying to go like toe to toe with Titanic, I mean, they did it with the the theme song for the movie a hundred percent. True. So we do see Harry is with Truman, kind of doing like last minute stuff, and Truman tells Harry how he wanted to be an astronaut, 
And this was actually Billy Bob Thornton came up with this backstory for Truman. So essentially he was on track to join NASA, but suffered crippling nerve nerve damage as a young man. So he was only ever able to serve as an administrator. Mm. And so Michael Bay loved it, wrote it in. And then Harry or Truman does make a comment. Like I really wanted one of those astronaut patches. Like that was always a dream of mine. We also see Harry apologize to Grace and and she's like, I don't blame you. Mom left us both. Like you did the best you can. And I was raised by these guys who absolutely adored me. Like I don't regret anything about my, my life or my upbringing. I mean, maybe the one thing which that they would change is, is rock hound telling her how to use a, a A tampon tampon. he's like i told her not like i showed her her." (laughs) and grace does call him out and say like don't talk like you're not coming back like right you you need to come back and if you could bring your my fiance with back with you that would be great and so that was kind of her way of letting him know that her and aj are now engaged Mm. and then we get to this day, one of the cringiest things I ever witnessed in cinema, which is Ben Affleck singing Leaving on a Jet Plane. I thought it was I, the most beautiful moment. I'm not going to lie. It was <laughs> cute. Just, I felt like he was singing terribly on purpose. Yeah. Which I just, I'm like, dude, at least try your best. He, but he that's he's being silly i thought it was realistic and i love the little the little barbershop quartet of max uh, <laughs> rockhound and bear just leaving boom bon, a jet. Like, like did they re- I, I took a note of that i was like did they rehearse that or were they like you know what let's just see what we make up yeah they they were really good it was really cute i liked it and then we get the the president's speech, which just feels like this is t- today our Independence Day. <laughs> but not even close to as good. Yeah. They should have just clipped the Independence <laughs> Day <laughs> speech and threw it in there. Nobody would have noticed. Remember when the aliens attacked? We're just going to reuse <laughs> that same speech. <laughs> Yeah, the speech really tried to be really like huzzah, like really like hurrah in like America. But even there's one part in the line there in the speech, he was like, he was like, yeah, every every piece of technology as mankind, every war that's been fought to help fuel this technology. I'm like, wow, this is a really pro-war, pro-America speech. I hear you. Okay. Yep. Recruit, recruit, recruit. I and never that's... thought about it that that's how yeah. they recruit for the military. Jeez, Louise. Yep. I didn't see that. I didn't see how films do that. Like you mentioned Top Gun earlier, and I'm like, wow, is that cool? Did not know that was an element behind the film with the yeah. motivation of the film. Yeah. So I, you... I. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, so now we are. They're being strapped in. And Owen Wilson's character is like, can you can you strap me in really tight? I don't want to fall out. Like, <laughs> like they're not going to. <laughs> he doesn't know. He's a poor, he's a, not, not a poor boy, but he's like a simple country boy with a ranch and a horse. Yeah. Yep. Save a, save a horse, ride a cowboy. <laughs> and then strap him in tight. A hundred percent. Don't want to fall out. Um, and then we get blast off. And so the subtle la- shuttle launches were f- that were filmed were real. Disney, who then owned Touchstone Pictures, were allowed to put cameras, around 16 of them, all over the place. The cameras on the launch pad were shaken so hard that all of the screws fell out of the lens and it had to be returned to Panavision in a box in pieces. But they did reassemble it. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah. No wonder it's such a beautiful moment in the movie. Just seeing the power of those rockets taking off. A hundred percent. And I beautifully shot movie. Really, it was. Mm -hmm. It really, really was. I mean, 
there are a lot of Michael Bayisms in his movies. Yes, the light, knows... like bitch, I'm blind. Yeah. <laughs> But he does know cinematography and establishing shots so well and just mm-hmm. the way they're framed and shot and colorized like it's just it he he does do a really good job with that yeah so now we are in space but not outer space I got real confused because they get to the Russian space station, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I looked away for a second. I was eating lunch. <laughs> but I was like, they moving around real easy on this space station, mm-hmm. right? And also, why is AJ in charge of doing anything down in the fuel bay? That's what I said. I'm like, anytime there's like a tiny hole that has to be crawled in, AJ volunteers as a tribute. <laughs> and so the next thing I know, all of a sudden, shit is on fire. I'm like, who the hell let AJ go touch nothing? Well, and it was, the cosmonaut has, Lev the cosmonaut, gotta love Lev. He... Actually, I'm going to change my background now to my other, my second choice. He gives AJ instructions, but he does have quite a bit of an accent. And he gives them very quickly. And it it just is not, AJ was not grasping any, like much of anything. And so, and then he doesn't pay attention. He starts talking about his uncle's picture and so he's not paying attention when AJ's trying to alert him that the gauges are going past 200. Right. And so it's just like AJ's face on a screen, just like screaming <laughs> and the cosmonaut not paying attention. I'll, I have a question. This whole like I'm in space and I have to stop at the a Russian space station to gas up. Is this a like a plot point in other movies because I feel like it's like a thing that happens unless I'm just remembering this movie but I feel like it's happened in another movie before and I'm just asking maybe the audience could tell us later but I feel like it's not the first or the last time I've seen this plot point just I haven't seen it for a space movie but I know in Top Gun Maverick I believe They refuel the jets mid-flight. Oh, okay. And there is a space station. Yeah, and there is an episode of Mystery Science Theater where there's lots of refueling, and it's quite a treat if you are bored one night. I I will get the name of the episode. Okay. So AJ fucks some shit up. And they now have to all get the hell out of Dodge. I think one of the aircrafts is only at 90% fueled because they weren't able to finish. And everyone is trying to get out. And they're almost at a point where they have to they they have to decide to leave AJ behind because he's not out on time. Mm-hmm. But they're able, it turns, it turns out that they're able to get on him in the Russian, but it's a little touch and go there, yes. a little touch and go. And then out of leaving that, they're trying to get back on trajectory so that they can head to the asteroid. But I guess the math wasn't mathing. How did they screw it up? No. And I don't think the fuel was ever like a concern again. <laughs> I don't know if it was like that was the shuttle that didn't make it anyway. So we didn't have to worry about only 90% fueled. (laughs) But this is the part where we are huge Martian fans, the movie The Martian in our house. And so I'm like, oh, they perform the Parnell maneuver around the moon where they use the earth or the moon's gravity to slingshot, which I'm sure there's a real technical term. But in The Martian, they call it the Parnell maneuver played by Donald Glover. And so the slingshot, and this is when Ken's like, why are they using up fuel using the the boosters if they're using the moon's gravity to slingshot them to propel them towards the asteroid? 
So I'm sure that's one of the NASA things that, that they, they have to found. point out that's wrong. <laughs> I've never maybe, seen maybe the Martian. <laughs> oh, good film. Maybe it's so scheduling timing wise, how they calculated everything down, maybe to the second they're like, we need the booster just to get there. Cause like you could slingshot, but it'd be like a nice, like, oh, we're, we're going to get there eventually. That's true. <laughs> yeah, true. I'm no scientist. I don't want to do <laughs> I'm some sort of rocket scientist. I'm not, I'm just, I'm just guessing. <laughs> I also do love that. Like we've barely been in space. And we've already destroyed the Russian space station. <laughs> and Lev goes, you bunch of cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> and things go awry. Like they crash, they get separated. They mm -hmm. crash into a bunch of little asteroids and rocks and stuff like that. And at one point, one of the space shuttles looks like it's going to hit the other one. And then it just crashes and at that point they're also they lose communication and they think that the crew everybody is dead and yeah. you know poor grace is freaking the hell out because yeah. it sounds like aj's dead and then it sounds like maybe her dad is dead too yeah. and she does at one point take truman to the to the streets She's like, you got my whole damn family out there and y'all ain't doing nothing to yeah. get them back. Well, and she walks in during that scene and and Truman's like, you probably shouldn't even be here. And she's literally like, I have no other place to go. <sighs> like my entire family is up there. And then I think that's where it clicks for Truman. Like she is really alone. Like yeah. this crew is her family. You would have to sedate me. This whole situation, yeah. you would have to sedate me. Yeah. And there's no way, like, I would either be like, you have to send my husband, my boyfriend, or my dad. You can't have both. It's almost yeah. like the idea, like, with the royals, like, they can't travel together. Right. Because mm. if, you know, if something happens, like, I feel the same way. Y you're not gonna kill all of my entire family. Right. And the guys on the rig, that's her family. Like, hell no. I'm going up there too. <laughs> I know how Save to drill. Save the seat. Save right. the seat. Okay. They, I'll tell them what to do. I'm pretty we're... sure she would have passed the physical, no problem. Yeah. She would have been <laughs> way better than them. Yeah. And then there is also a part where the one shuttle uh, is crashing that like someone yells, we're going down. And then Ken yelled back to the screen. There's no down in space. <laughs> <laughs> what were you, what were you going to say, Steven? Well, I was going to say if, if grace made it up to in, into the ship and into the, into space, into outer space, we could have had a conversation between her and lady astronaut. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> it's a michael bay film they would have just been talking about bruce or i don't know yes that's true i really like his teeth is that your fiance <laughs> <laughs> is your daddy seeing anyone right, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so now aj and bear and the russian some, the, the Ru russian lives with them they get into the Dillo, and so they're going to drive to the other shuttle is well, like their only option. Yeah, because on in the in the little armadillo thing, they there's like a beacon beacon blinking where the other space shuttle is, so or the other armadillo. So that is the only thing that he could think of. He's like, I can at least track where they are and try to get right. there. But go ahead. Oh. Ben Affleck was the only actor who actually drove one of the armadillos and it, he noted that it had a Chevy 357 engine, but was dressed up to look much more impressive. And the armadillo was so much wider than a car. He remembers continually scraping the wheels along the sides of the canyon. canyon. The one thing that stood out for me for the armadillo, I was like, okay, we're in space. We're here to drill. Why is there a Gatling gun on this? Just a hundred percent like is it for plot is it because we're americans and we put guns on everything <laughs> but do we, have, do we have to blast through like potential like barriers 
aliens y'all <laughs> oh the aliens that's why because mm -hmm. i'm like really a gatling gun yeah. and i'm and, <laughs> and I, y2k me felt like yeah there's a gun in here shoot it off aj do it but now i'm like all the things to put on an armadillo a gun yeah okay. i think it's like it's even rock hound says it later on in the movie who brings a gun to space yeah because we're cowboys ah uh, got it segue into our next movie space cowboys i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> So meanwhile, the other shuttle lands 26 miles. Is that what they said? Off mm. course. The only so number I remember is 90% fuel and it wasn't important. <laughs> <laughs> and so instead of drilling on this very specific like fissure that would have been in, in the, the soil composition was very easy to drill through. Now they're drilling through some material that they've never even seen before. Some some composite soil that is very tough. And so and there was something about iron. Yes. Iron ferrite. Yes. Thank you. Steve Buscemi, the genius of the film. I love that moment when they're like, how the hell do you know? And he goes, because I'm a goddamn genius. That's why. <laughs> so um, they're starting to drill the, the drill bits. They've already broken a drill bit. They're trying to figure shit out. Meanwhile, and then he says, unpack the judge. I don't know if we ever figure out what the judge was. Some mm. sort of equipment. And then back on the Dillo, Lev finds out they're not astronauts and they're just <laughs> oil rig workers. <laughs> and he's like, you're, you're not an astronaut? <laughs> and that's when Lev is like, okay, I have to save the day because obviously these people know nothing. Right. Just his face in the picture behind you is just such disgust. <laughs> <laughs> and then back at the drilling team, they blew the tranny. So they're going to get another one. And is this? I think this is when on earth, meanwhile, back at the ranch, <laughs> they have decided that there's the contingency plan needs to be put into place, I believe, because they're not drilling fast enough um, because and the communication. The problem is that the. I guess. What is it? The the ability to be able to communicate to the team is also the ability to communicate with the bomb to detonate it from, you know, remotely. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, okay, well, fuck this. Let's just blow this shit up. That's the, the second plan. And so the president and his men come and try to detonate it. And so they're fighting down at home about that. Truman is trying to fight for the men to be alive. And also the guys, Harry is fighting the, the astronaut. Like, you're not going to fucking kill me. And the astronaut pulled out a fucking gun. How did, you because he had Sharp, played by William Finkter, had special instructions of like if shit went sideways this is he knew about the secondary protocol mm. and essentially i guess the gun was the insurance to make sure they kept drilling mm. well uh. apparently with their deal with the the movie makers deal with the air force they didn't tell them about this gun scene they were afraid <laughs> they were afraid that if they found out about it, that it would be a problem. So what they ended up doing was Bay said he was nervous about showing it, showing the film to the Air Force. They filmed it and said, like, you know, ask for forgiveness later kind of situation. Right. right. But the Air Force said, given the manner with which Finkter, Fick, is it Fickn, Fickner? Finkner? Finkner pulls the gun and the overall Fickner? situation. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. When the way he pulls the gun and the overall situation, the Air Force ended up approving the scene after the fact. So it ended up, we love a gun, America. So it was totally uh, fine. That checks out. That yeah, checks yeah, out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Something We're we would do. Hundred percent. Could he get a bigger gun? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> only one. He only has one gun. 
we need a shotgun. You're right. <laughs> we need a very shotgun, not just a pistol. Uh, Gatling guns on the armadillos. Yes. Done. But but Harry actually is able to turn things around. I mean, he beats that man's ass and he has him wire almost wire cutters around that man's it, neck. It, it, no, I think that it's like a giant like monkey wrench on his <laughs> something. Yeah. It and, wasn't big enough to go around his entire neck. Yes. And I, I don't know how that man was. He was he was still talking with that. I'd have passed out out of pure fright. Like, you go no, choke no, a no. bitch. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever you want, Harry. <laughs> whatever you want. <laughs> and then on the ground, um <laughs> Truman has like a radio to the, the Cody guy, and he's like shut it down from here and so the guy is like hacking into <laughs> nasa's system now to override the president's override and he was sweating y'all yes. notice how that man was sweating that was the best acting in this movie it, it was like he had a gun to his head <laughs> <laughs> and then at some point i love the red phone it always reminds me of the old batman tv show but mm -hmm. they have the red phone and truman tries he gets on the phone with the president he's like fuck this he's gonna tell him about himself he's like this shit ain't gonna work and blah 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 so the president eventually does decide it, it does you know to turn it off because they do try to turn it back on they do and then the president's like okay you can turn it off and then no, everyone uh, what's his face cuts the wire yeah it, it never oh. gets totally turned off they're they're ready to blow it up and it's yeah. not until right. harry the convinces the colonel right 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 so that's happening they they do it but the president eventually did say like it was okay because he gives the phone back to the head guy in charge and i, I thought the president said fine after what's his face pl pleaded the case harry harry no truman oh no so they hack in they turn it off right and then i think they like the president hack. is like nah son and they override the hack and it turns back on and that's when Harry's like, you need to turn this fucking bomb off. Right. And and Harry, they do do that. Mm -hmm. But I, I do remember Truman getting on the actual red phone and talking to the president. Yeah. And he I believe he does convince him. Okay. Even mm. though the guys did their own thing and said, well, fuck whatever y'all are doing. And then Harry does get onto the TV and is like, I don't know what the fuck y'all are doing. <laughs> but y'all ain't killing me today. <laughs> That's a dope line. He's like, NASA, you have a problem. <laughs> and uh, this is where things get a little bit hazy for me. There's just a lot of flying debris, a lot of people randomly dying. Yeah, Max flies off the planet, the oh, the, the rock, he gone. R.I.P. Had, had his metaphorical balls kicked and just- <laughs> he did. He no, did. no drill. Meanwhile, uh, AJ is still driving the Dilla to <laughs> the other shuttle and, and makes it to the Grand Canyon. Yeah, he comes to this canyon and he's like, Well, Bear, she said if we turn off the thrusters, you'll just fly into space. So let's try that. And so they like just like speed jump the bus <laughs> over the canyon, make it show up and so now they are back to drilling mm. and then there becomes a point where they're drilling and harry's yelling at aj to pull back we're right back at that situation and again mm -hmm. aj is like i know i can do this let me do this trust me and so he does that part harry's like i trust you <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile Rockhound has space dementia yeah, and is duct taped to the chair. I think that's a harsh criticism on Sharp's part. Space dementia. I see a man coping the best that he can with humor and activity. He's literally like, "It's the end of the world, guys. We got the best view in the. We got the best seat in the house." But he does start shooting a gun randomly. I mean, that Sharp pulled a out little, a gun. Do guns shoot in space? I don't know. 
Because people, wouldn't you need oxygen to ignite the spark to shoot the bullet? Unless Michael, it's a kinetic gun, like kinetic energy. Just I don't even know. Now I'm just throwing out fancy words. <laughs> Michael Bay said, "Shut up with that science shit." <laughs> <laughs> First global warming. Now you're talking about my guns in space. Relax. <laughs> Everything it's... is fine. Nothing is wrong. <laughs> oh, it says, assuming you are floating freely in space, the gun will work just as it does on Earth. However, the bullet will continue moving for many thousands of years, eventually coming to stop due to the friction from the diffused material found in empty space. A That's a lot space. of science. What's it? I don't know what empty so space just is. empty space where there's no planets, no big, bo no actual bodies or like or nothing there, no like. So it's just like the little particles like that make up, you know, dead stars or something. I don't like that's I don't even know, but that okay. would stop the bullet eventually. That says that's what's gonna stop it. I, I'm assuming unless it hits another like celestial body. So let me get my math right. <laughs> we got space. Mm -hmm. We got out of space. Mm -hmm. And now empty space. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Layers. We are peeling back layers here. The space onion continues to evolve. <laughs> Apparently, empty space is a space that has all the air and other gases removed from it. That doesn't make sense though. And the that must be just like on Earth. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Well, they get to drill in. Harry trusts AJ. They reach their their point of no return, but they also have to like cut some shit in the pipe. So AJ got to go down another hole again. Yep. And now all of a sudden the rock is like, well, who are y'all? We got to kill you. We're going to start <laughs> just mayhem everywhere. So the rock start fucking up some shit. The AJ is like, whatever it's a rock <laughs> now nah? is it not a rock <laughs> well i was like the person or the movie uh obviously <laughs> i'm talking about the piece of rock that dwayne johnson through. was on the canyon and he's like you know what <laughs> hmm. Jackie, the audience knew what i was talking about <laughs> i was so confused for a second <laughs> Continue. First of all, he's Dwayne Johnson now, so it wouldn't even make any sense. He's always the rock to me. And when this movie came out, he was still the rock. Anyways, I'm Smelling talking what about he's cooking. the damn asteroid or whatever. <laughs> is mad. Is it trying is mad. to is trying to get everybody. You come or into my house. <laughs> <laughs> And AJ is crawling through a butt crack trying to mm -hmm. get shit ready to put the bomb in. Because the asteroid gets all upset, it fucks up the bomb detonator. So now somebody has to actually be there to set it off. And now we're like, who going to do it? Who going to do it? Straws. Jackie, and do you want to step out for this one? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all finish up without me. <laughs> so I was good and i watched the entire movie last night so i am prepared <laughs> william is that the name of the the astronaut sharp willie sharp sure yeah. yes sharp mm -hmm. he says y'all gotta pick straws because we need two astronauts i like how he was like i'm not even in this shit <laughs> y'all gonna die today what are you i'm driving the car <laughs> <laughs> and the question did he use the wires from the bomb he <laughs> cut up as they're the recycling straws. family, Jackie. They're not trying to make new dirt, <laughs> new, new trash. <laughs> Repurposing. And I I mean, obviously, Rockwell, is that his, what's his name? Rockhound? Rockhound can't do it. His ass crazy. Oh, so he can't... wanted to. He was like, I volunteer. <laughs> I volunteer <laughs> tribute. Me on this rock. But we can't trust tra can't trust them. So um, AJ, AJ's volunteering all of a sudden. He's like, I want to pull a straw. And Harry's like, sit your ass down. It's going to be me, son. Of course, they pick straws. It's fucking AJ. I love the part, though, when they're still picking the straws. And Lev is like, is this good or bad? Because <laughs> you don't know the length until someone gets the short straw. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so... 
then it's AJ and he's fully prepared to like go and do take care of business and I don't know (laughs) I don't know how nobody else suspects that Harry's gonna let AJ do this he's like Harry's like I'm gonna I'm gonna take him down so they go on the space elevator and (laughs) because that's what it is and they go down and that Harry he roughs up AJ takes his air away yeah he pulls his oxygen from his suit so aj immediately starts choking backs up into the space elevator and harry snatches the detonator from him and he pulls pulls up patch yes and he gives it to him he's like give this to truman and then he sends harry back up there but like in this scene this is like beautiful masculinity right like Mm -hmm he tells aj he loves him yes he tells aj he's always been a son to him he tells aj that he's perfect to be with his daughter he couldn't imagine anybody else being with his daughter and to take care of his daughter like everything that i think aj has probably always wanted to hear anyways Mm -hmm. and then he's crying and he tells harry he loves him Mm -hmm. and it's just like so sweet and perfect because i feel like we don't see that enough in media and men in this relationship would a hundred percent show this kind of love like yeah ben affleck said he could have played it where he's trying to be like all strong and tight-lipped and and whatnot but he just felt like this was a scene that he could he should be vulnerable in the relationship that they had and it's just it was very beautiful and nice a satisfying arc for their for their relationship mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like like yeah like ben's on his knees screaming i love you harry no i love you and just just take care of my daughter take care of my little girl now yeah i do question though because we have had spotty internet service thanks verizon out here in space <laughs> and now all of a sudden <laughs> we we have clear connection he could talk to grace grace is on the monitors and talking and she's and this is like for me this hit home because most of the time as i got older i always call my mom and dad like mom and dad except when i'm like sick or something sad then they become mommy and daddy again Mm -hmm. like so when she was saying daddy after all the the whole movie she's been calling him harry yeah I tried calling my dad Greg once, man. He was not happy. I was mad at him, but he told me, I don't give a fuck what I did. You are not calling me by by my first name. (laughs) But she starts calling him daddy. And it just like such, she, she does, she cries, but she, it's like, she knows that he has to do what he has to do. And it's heart, it's heart wrenching. Really it is. But then the space rocks start acting up again and they're trying to get out your boy. It's broken. Lev is like, <laughs> let me do it. And and like, he's trying to be polite about it because the female astronaut. I'm we sure. have to know her name. This is I, bad. Hold on. I am DB. She's Watts. not even the top 20 people. Watts is Watts. trying to fix it. And he's like, I know what I'm doing. Like, let me help. And finally he just like, throws her out of the way like there's a time for niceties <laughs> and that's when he starts beating shit with a wrench and all of a sudden it works everything now works. i can go home <laughs> now i can be hero um but they're worried because at this point harry still has not like is not responding and he isn't detonating anything so they're like what the hell's going on and as in true Bruce Willis fashion, he, he he comes back, climbs up wherever he fell, and he's able to detonate the asteroid. And it does fall into, it breaks into two pieces. The world is saved. Woohoo! The detonation and- sequence was, I thought, was a great, like, representation of, like, your life flashing before your eyes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And like, we do... Of- yeah. Go ahead, just of grace running down the field as a little girl you see arms reaching out you see this like almost this like queen bohemian rhapsody cover style of like just harry with the black background grace with the black background mm-hmm. it was yeah that scene where everything just explodes 
It was really nice. And and we even get a glimpse of her in her wedding dress. So it's almost like what he he's he's Imagine seeing his whole me. life, but he is also seeing like what the possibilities are, which was really sweet. Yeah. And it, and we do get to see everybody slide on down the slide. <laughs> Come on down to Rapids Water Park. We all our walking bo- around here. Our bodies are fine. We weren't just yeah. in space. We right. Just, and, and not only we're, we're sliding, we're slow walking. Then Grace is like able to jump into AJ's arms like, that's atrophy, baby. He ain't holding nothing. You falling. <laughs> He's been driving a dillo in zero <laughs> gravity for right. the past 24 hours. Why did that why did that roll off so well, Jackie? He's been driving a dillo in zero <laughs> for hours. What what are you doing? I was spitting some rhymes. <laughs> Yo, that should be a, that should be a new shirt for y'all. Driving a dillo in zero. <laughs> you know her you know her rap name is McLight. McLight? <laughs> I accidentally said Mick Light instead of MC Light in an uh, earlier episode. (laughs) And that's going to live with me until the day I die. (laughs) We all make mistakes, you know, Danielle. Everybody makes mistakes, as Miley Cyrus would say. (laughs) So we, you know, the world is saved. Everybody, you know, comes together. Now, Ben Affleck said it was his idea to have the wedding scene at the end because they were just going to end it there Mm -hmm. but we get the wedding scene and you see the entire crew in the front and then you see the pictures i like that the pictures that they had of them were the astronaut pictures (laughs) not just like them on the rig how she knew them no it's (laughs) what did they what did they have time to get shots of the they're like photo headshots what did they do that i feel like it was like you know like on school picture day like they sat down took their picture and walked onto the shuttle (laughs) like yeah i'm I'm thinking maybe it was yeah like journalists whoever were there at the time maybe they caught a good one but it i i think it kind of like rings true to how they would have their photos there because they died astronauts oh you're right they died as heroes, as astronauts. Did they get know? that NASA benefits? Just saying. Uh, like, does Grace get the no taxes since Harry didn't come back? Well, well she's marrying I mean, she AJ. Married, that's right, true. Yeah. yeah, that's true. We Priorities. did miss a little piece where when, they, when they're when they slow-mo walking on the tarmac, Chick's son mm. and April O'Neil is there. And so he runs just, up to- just got that you've been calling her that that's who she is as soon O'Neal. as she came on on the scene on the screen i was like that bitch is april o'neill from the original <laughs> teenage mutant ninja turtle i recognize that chin anywhere Jeez. so we see uh chick son and april o- o'neill are there and this is when all of, uh, like she's proud of him now and so she's like that's not a salesman that's your daddy she see that good government check. She ain't dumb. <laughs> I think we should work. We should work. Things out. We should work things out. Hell yeah. Ba- baby need out. a college fund. I see what you did. I see what you did for us, right? For us. I got to snag. I got to snag my astronaut before other chicks get their hands on that money. <laughs> And that is Armageddon. Yay! Uh, we did it. Huzzah! Huzzah! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I feel like an astronaut right now. My legs are asleep. <laughs> no one jump Let's on me. Wrap <laughs> this up. So, did you know we have a comedy called Broadway Brawler to thank for getting three popular Bruce Willis films? Bruce Willis decided Brawler could not be salvaged and sought a way to exit the product project and J- disney's then head joe roth worked out a deal with where willis would star in armageddon and two future films for the studio and exchange and in exchange disney would absorb the failed project's costs at an advance as an advance against the his initial salary the other two films willis later made under his this deal were the sixth sense and unbreakable Whoa. Very, very smart. 
<laughs> Super smart. I do love that Bruce Willis was given a second trailer that has a full working gym at an estimated cost of $175,000. And apparently it was reported that he was never, he never used it. Of course. <laughs> Power move, man. <laughs> so there you have it. Yeah. But before we get into our ratings, Stephen, tell everybody where they can find you again. Oh, of course. So you can find me on social media, Instagram, TikTok, even some. I'm on Twitter. I don't use it that much, but I'm on there. Why not? I'm on YouTube. Just search up Stephen Brogan Cortez. Search it up. I'll be there playing video games, singing a song, talking to friends <laughs> about who knows what, because why the F not? Because if you want to go do something, as long as you're not hurting yourself or anyone else around you, God bless. Why not? Go and climb that mountain. <laughs> and don't forget to check out Steven's podcast. So it's come a, hang it's out a on the podcast. Time. Come hang out. It's just me talking into a mic with some friends, just spewing out some thoughts. You know, if you <laughs> want to just have some relaxing white noise in the background, let my voice soothe you. Come Ooh. on over. Come on over. <laughs> And if you just want pure nonsense, don't forget to follow us at No More Late Fees on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. And I'm going to start with you, Stephen. What is your present day rating of Armageddon? Oh, it still stands for me. It still stands. Even if the ridiculousness of the Gatling gun, <laughs> you know, the, the fire in space, it's, it still stands the same. I would buy it and watch it again. Jackie? I'm going to tell you in a minute, but that Mystery Science Theater 3000 episode is called The Starfighters. Check it out. So, yeah, I I would buy it. I own it. Nothing wrong with this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly was surprised how much I enjoyed rewatching this movie because I remember liking the movie, but I, I haven't thought about it in such a long time. Mm -hmm. So... It held, like, I was thoroughly entertained. So it would be, I would buy it. I would buy it. It's a 2023 employee pick. Woo woo. Mm. Yay. <laughs> so if you have opinions on Armageddon or just want to mention anything in general, one thing that Ken brought up that I was not aware of is that there is a theory that Steve Buscemi's character in Con Air, because he like escapes and walks away at the end, is Rockhound in this movie. He just like goes to an oil rig <laughs> and lives <laughs> out his life. <laughs> well, that begs the question, is Armageddon and The Rock in the same cinematic universe? Because Stanley Anderson, who played the U.S. president in Armageddon, also played the U.S. president in The Rock, yeah. which were both directed by Michael Bay. So with that theory and that, maybe they are the same character. A, a little Bayover, Bayverse? I don't, I don't know. We're work, <laughs> workshopping that. Anywho. <laughs> um, yeah, opinions, theories, hit us up. Lost my place. 909-601-6653. 909-601-NMLF. I did it for the first time. You did. I'm so <laughs> excited. <laughs> or you could twat us at the Twitters or leave a, <laughs> leave a message on our Spotify for Podcasters account, and you could be featured on a future episode. We are so thankful, Stephen, that you joined us. We had so much fun with you. You've been a great co-host, and we hope that you come back. We hope you had fun. Oh, most definitely. I had a riot with y'all. This was awesome. <laughs> Your dynamic is wonderful. I love this dynamic. Oh, thank you. Oh, 25 <laughs> years in the making. <laughs> oh, I love it. Thank you again. It was a pleasure. <laughs> and as always, I don't want to miss a thing and be kind and rewind. <laughs> Mm. Ah, love it. <laughs>